oh, this is sort of it. I can find something I enjoy to read. And then I think, and then I think the arts will, uh, will help people survive. It's nothing like being original, is there? And I remember a friend of mine that he was in the Met College of Medicine and uh, came from England and uh, he tried different, when he retired, he tried different uh, disciplines. And you know what I think he enjoyed most was making a little dollhouse for his grandchildren. And so, and I haven't got it here, but my, one of my sons made me a little tray for my walker. And I don't suppose it cost any more than two dollars, but uh, it is, it is so useful. And I see him looking at it and thinking, I did, you know, I made this. So there's so many examples of simple things that, um, well, my mind is blank at the moment, but simple things that can give you great happiness. Thank you for those, those thoughts, Thelma. Those are all the questions that I, I officially have. But before I end the recording and our conversation, I just wanted to give you some time if there's anything else you want to speak about. I just love going to those little towns and meeting those people. At one town, the other side of Waka, Tway, I'm sure you've never been there, but uh, um, there's a little, you, they call it a hotel, but it's really a bar. It's really mainly uh, a bar. And uh, Lydia, that I talked to, uh, she and her husband came there and, and uh, I think he was already working, but she wanted a job. And, and so they looked at it and, oh, she wasn't any bit, not really interested. But finally, anyway, she bought it. And there's a great panorama of it in the exhibition and also in the book. And uh, <laughs> she's sitting at one end. The marvel of a panorama is that it ta you can put the same person in different sections. She's standing there, and little Johnny is over in the other corner, <laughs> and, and he's there every day. But what I liked about what Lydia said was, she said, you know, there's people come here that want to buy this. And she said, you know, I don't think I would have sold it for any amount of money. And so isn't that, I didn't realize the importance of a bar. But she said anyone can come here and have a cup of coffee and uh, uh, women come, which they didn't before. But everybody's welcome. And certainly she never knew I was coming, but I knocked on the door and I was always welcome. Uh, I think about the other, the, if you're ever 
traveling and want to go to Twa if you want well no you wouldn't now because it's closed but there is an there was an amazing store there that had everything that you would ever want and uh, uh, I'd heard people say if you couldn't find things like old rubber rings if you couldn't find them in Saskatoon you just had to go to Twy. So that was another point. And then Paul and Aileen, and the little, again, you love seeing where they lived and his workshop. Because when we, I was told that I had to meet them. And when I, and when we drove up, I thought, oh, I hope nobody is home because it, it was a house that, it wasn't a house, it was just, uh, I guess, you know, I don't know a word for it. Um, but sure enough, we knocked on the door and Paul said, oh, come in, and the big galvanized coffee pot was on the wood burning stove immediately, and uh, we were just entertained like you wouldn't believe. And before I forget it, Aline, the, his wife, when the exhibition was at the old Mendel not that long ago, Aline's portrait was on this high flagpole in front of the Mendel art gallery. And so when you see a picture of Paul and Aline in Tway, you'll, uh, you'll think of Aline being advertised on top of, the, of this flagpole at the Mendel. And so, you know, for years I had to go back to see them every year because uh, I was just amazed at the love between them and the, and little Paul, he could, little did I say, no, he wasn't little. He could fix a little jackknife or every time I went there, there was huge machinery in his yard. So he could fix that and he'd fix anything for you with nothing really except he knew everything where everything was in his little workshop. I could tell you so many stories but I um, that was Tway but I told you about Nellie Schnell I, I enjoyed the fact that she thought there was a divine spark in everybody. And when they lived in St. Wahlberg, or yeah, when they moved there, she thought it was just surrounded by, she knew it was surrounded by different ethnic groups. And she, you know, thought of them as maybe nobody. She got there and she met them. And that's when she said there was a divine spark in everybody because she found it. And that was the best lesson she ever learned in her entire life. And then I guess what brought me maybe the most happiness was when I, I tried to um, give the uh, women and men that I photographed, I tried to give them uh, a print of it within a week. And one woman said, I've never liked a photograph of myself, but I rather like this one. Would you mind making me 10 copies? Mm -hmm. So. 
I was delighted. And there was another one that said the ten copies. Anyway, that was the response I got was the the uh, the seemed to be the inspire I gave them that I was photographing them because with Paul and Aline once they brought out the big panorama <laughs> and uh, oh you gave us this you know and the fact that none of it I didn't and I don't think money ever and I never thought about getting any money for it and it was the Saskatchewan Arts Board that gave me the money and I kept <laughs> saying surely they but they were they must have seen from those early days that maybe maybe I had something and then And now, I just wanted to tell you about one other. Let me think now what it would be. Highway 41. Oh, I love one woman telling me in Aberdeen, telling me about so or three boys and the middle boy in grade six, five, I think it was. He. Uh, he wouldn't go to school. I sh she said, I didn't know what to do with him. Spank him or make him go. Or... And then he cried and cried. And finally, I think she must have maybe got, she didn't tell me, but he got a new teacher. And it was Max Braithwaite. Oh. And Boy, she said, he was right at the top of the class. So doesn't that show you a lot? And for her husband was from Scotland, but um, he was out of town one night, and um, she thought she knew the sow was going to produce these piglets. And she thought the hired man was there. She got up at 3 a.m. and went out, and there the little piglets were. Uh, no hired man. And she took a pitchfork, and she got, I think, most of them out and put them in the kitchen by the oven. But And the, her boys said to her the next morning, Mom, you didn't go in there, did you? Yes, I did. And I guess that's what you call courageous, is it? Because isn't it kind of dangerous? I don't know anything about farming, but I'm told that it would be dangerous for her. Well, Thelma, thank you so much for sharing your insights and your stories with me. And I really love um, ending on this note about how everyone has a divine spark that your friend Nellie Schnell said. And I think that's what you capture in your photographs. And I think that's what you've shared with me today in this interview mm, is, you. is your divine spark. So do you think those, my early days in Nova Scotia, do you think that sort of helped me it's the foundation of who you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's what uh, Heritage Saskatchewan is all about, eh? who you are. And, and it's so important. Do you think, I still feel that uh,
that I've already said, but I think that the good in any culture will survive. I think that's the perfect way to end this interview, Selma. The good in any culture will survive. Do you believe, do you believe that? that the good in any culture. Because the good in these biographies I've read, I think they live on. And we need today, we need an Abraham Lincoln. We need a Teddy Roosevelt. And they were. We have Thelma Pepper here today with me, <laughs> and I'm Kristen Catherwood, and this has been an interview as part of the COVID-19 Culture Living Heritage Project. It's Thursday, August 13th, 2020, and I want to thank you, Thelma, so much for your time today and for sharing your thoughts with me. And with that, I'm going to end this formal interview. So no. Stop oh, recording. I didn't know we were on at that end. Oh, yes, we were. <laughs> it was all good. And I'm just going to end this one as well.